Of course, as soon as I upload a video on here, 343 goes and uploads a blog detailing everything about campaign network co-op. So this is going to be everything that we need to know about this, the dates, what kind of content, and also we you be playing as a bunch of Master Chiefs? Well, I think this image kind of answers that question right there. The biggest takeaway, guys, the absolute thing you need to know is that the upcoming flight, which is targeted to run from the week of july 15th that is a friday of next month but make sure your insider builds are up and ready to go up to date and just ready to jump in and play some campaign co-op now why was campaign co-op not involved with halo at launch well it's a bit more complicated than your traditional experience some of the questions they had to answer was how do we set up a shared world state how do we keep fire teams together how do we determine intent and mission focus how do we prevent sequence breaking and narrative breaking and stuff like that as well so a lot of different things here and he said specifically that one of the core principles is that they didn't want to require you to have your own isolated co-op save i said of course you can use a separate save slide if you want for co-op if you wanted to but we wanted to give players the option to have co-op progress count towards the main playthrough if that's how they wanted to play which i think is a excellent decision right there probably created a little bit extra work for them to get that to happen but it is the right decision and right move to make and they mentioned shared world state because obviously halo of its campaign is very different from everything we've had previously 343 had this philosophy as well of no spartan left behind right here which i think is actually a really great feature saying when players join the fire team and choose their save slots to play on the game aggregates the states of all missions across those saves and sets up a world state in which any missions completed by all fire team members are marked as complete while any missions not completed by all members of the fire team are marked as incomplete so basically the saying is that they also say here this is kind of like the lowest common denominator so if you're jumping in the co-op say one guy is super far ahead in their progress another person's pretty far behind in their progress the game state will follow along with the lowest common denominator as the person who has the least amount of things completed within the game now my initial reaction that's like well it'd be really kind of sucky if like you're on the last mission and you're like man i really want to play this with my friend and well the friend who has the lowest you know common denominator hasn't really played a whole lot you can't really like jump ahead and play those later missions like the road as they mentioned as a really good co-op mission which to me is a little bit of a bummer because i would like to see just like total freedom when it comes to co-op like i don't really try to progress with friends when it comes to playing co-op at least for the campaign from my experience i mean I just kind of want to jump in and blow some stuff up and just like hey if we accomplish some things we do which it sounds like there might be some more limitations to co-op we'll get into that a little bit later in this video and just for clarification network co-op is coming to all platforms xbox one xbox series x and s as well as pc and it's fully cross play supported so pc can play with console and anything in between and even if you're playing on xcloud that works too and the great thing is that it's all running on dedicated servers which is super important to have a nice consistent connection experience when it comes to playing halo online and three for three states here how the joining progress is going to be happening with this game and essentially it's going to be kind of working like the same way as multiplayer does where essentially what you do they have to just kind of team up together and then start a game it doesn't really sound like there will be any kind of campaign co-op matchmaking or anything like that with this it's gonna be strictly kind of like your standard like invite your friend to your game choose your game slot that you want to save it in and progress forward and confirmed by the image that we saw earlier this is basically what 343 is now officially confirmed that in halo infinite everyone is chief while playing campaign co-op i was really hoping to have a chance to play as your multiplayer spartan as like the co-op player uh just because i think that just be a little bit more fun a little bit more ways to kind of bring your multiplayer spartan which is part of canon by the way it would make sense for having another spartan alongside master chief when it comes to playing through the co-op campaign i think maybe just probably to get this feature out the door they probably just like just make everyone a master chief kind of thing so it's kind of like in the same lines that we have for like combat evolved halo 2 and halo 4. though i do really hope down the line we do get a chance to bring in our multiplayer spartan into the campaign like we already see that with the narrative events right that we had for season two that you're multiplayer spartan is in the cutscene, so there is that technology there in some capacity of course playing in game is totally different experience 
Uh, though I just, but that would be my preference, and I'm sure a lot of people like to have that preference as well, as it kind of helps, you know, individualize each character. But there is some more limitations coming here, guys, when it comes to co-op, and it's three, stated here by 343. Saying that they have established what is called an area of operations. This is the maximum distance that players in a fire team can stray from one another as they explore and tackle the challenges of Zeta Halo. If you stray too far from your fire team, you will be getting a warning to return to the team. If you ignore that warning and continue, you will be killed by the ongoing AWOL, as this would refer to it as, uh, and then it's being spawned back near your teammate. This is a little bit of a bummer to me because I would like to be able to have the opportunity to just kind of like jump around to different kind of missions and things like that within this game as well. Like say, especially that one mission where you have like three main towers you need to go through. It'd be really cool to kind of like separate out like teams of two. You guys go tackle, you know, one tower to the other one, meet at the third one or something like that. That'd be really fun. It doesn't really sound like that'd be possible as that the warning radius starts at 800 feet. So not like super close, but not really super far. And the kill radius is 1000 feet. They don't really state any reason why besides just wanting to keep players together or why they implemented this. Personally, I would like to see that kill and, you know, warning radius just removed completely and just let the players do what they want with the world state. Because I think there's some really cool things you could pull off in some crazy distances, right? Uh, but I don't know why you have to keep this kill distance in there, but I mean, maybe it could be something involving like if you stray too far away and you do different things, game states get corrupted or something. They just don't state that at all in this blog, which is a kind of a sad moment because I would like to have just like no kill barriers and just be able to run around with whatever you do what you want, whenever you want. A little detail on Spartan cores as well with this whole thing. And they said that upgrades and cores are tracked separately per player. If anyone collects a core in co-op, then everyone in the fire team who had not already collected that core will get credit for it. So it's kind of the same thing as the lowest common denominator. If that person who has not made as much progress hasn't captured that yet and someone else does, everyone in the team gets credit for it. But it's not just co-op that we're getting with this flight. We're also getting campaign mission replay as well. I'm very excited about this. This is one thing I've actually really wanted to get into and very even have an opportunity to make some content about this. Then both in solo and co-op play, you can open the tag map, highlight a completed mission, and then choose replay. You will then be prompted to select the difficulty and be offered an activity of any kind of skulls you have unlocked so far. Setting that mission to replay resets it and also teleports you and the fire team to that location to tackle on the challenges. You're afraid to wander off to do something else, fast shuffle away, or resume to the for this main mission. So this is a really great feature to be brought into the game here. This is gonna really help me out a lot when it comes to making context. I kinda wanted to get into like, doing some like campaign analytical videos, right? And it's kinda tough to do that, where if you can't backtrack and really experience what that mission has to offer. And some of your commenters, I'm sure already love comments, but just to let you guys know, the progress that you make within this flight will not carry over to the retail game. This is very standard for all the flighting process, so I'm not too, you know, bent out of shape about it, especially since I've already completed the campaign. And they stated here that 343 says that the main goal is for this flighting to just kind of catch any networking issues because everyone's network is going to be different and you can't really fully anticipate all the errors and potential issues until it's out into the wild for people to play. This is going to be a great way for 343 to get more data. And also just to recap guys, that this will be happening the week of July 15th. Again, it's a targeted date. This could move depending on if any late issues pop up. Though if they're bringing up a blog like this, it sounds like things are probably in a rather good state where they could make this work out just fine. So make sure your insider profiles are up to date, guys, and I'll see you online. Once we get the concrete deets of what the details and all the dates are going to be, you know, I'll share with you guys here on the channel. And it sounds like content wise, they didn't really say exactly what you'd be able to play. If it's going to be a single mission or anything else like that. It just sounds like you'd be able to, to be able to play through the entire campaign, uh, depending on, well, obviously what state uh, of the game that you're playing. If you're doing a whole new start, yeah, you'll be able to play through the whole campaign in this flight, which is going to be an amazing experience. And you know what else is an amazing experience? Checking out these videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days. So when it comes to content on this channel, we've been uploading daily and sometimes twice a day about. So thank you guys for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.